Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Comic Core, and thank you for coming for another episode of The List. This is a show that doesn't happen every single week. It happens whenever uh, whenever we have the time. Uh, we've got a great panel of, uh, of people who come on this show to talk about how they collect, why they collect, and the way they're collecting has changed. From my panel tonight, I've got Mr. JD Comics, the Comic Core champion. JD, how you doing, man? Good, good. How is everybody out there? Very good. Thank you very much for having us back on the list or us having each other on the list. It's a good you've trip. Been, you've been so busy lately. You got Golden Guys, you got yeah. the Unlimiteds. You've been a busy guy. Oh, yeah. And you're trying to keep that uh, off the rails in line as well, which is a whole other job. Yeah. That's a, that's, that, I leave it up to JB now. <laughs> and then. From the guest panel tonight, we've got two awesome members of this community. I'm going to go to Mr. Discovery Bay, the hardest working guy in YouTube. How you doing, JB? I am wonderful. I'm um, so honored to be here on uh, the list. Uh, looking forward to this panel of questions. <laughs> We're going to drill and grill you, sir. But you he, just, he powered down dinner just to be ready for us yeah. tonight. Literally. <laughs> And then we've got Adam, Bear Island Comics himself. This is not Island versus Bay, Bay versus Island. This is just hangout time with Adam. How you doing, Bear Island Comics? Hey, you don't know when a when an unboxing match is going to break out. It could happen. Hey, I'm ready. You got to be ready. 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 He's got the stack behind him at all I'm times. I'm ready. I'll take on all, all comers. Actually, we're going to get rid of four Spider-Man booth boxes Thursday night with Spectre and Alec, I believe. Oh, damn. Yep. Wait. Yeah, and you can see back there, Adam has got quite a collection role, and he is ready to, to show off and talk about some <laughs> books. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you don't know any of these gentlemen, their, their channels are linked below, and you can definitely go check out the kinds of things that they're making because I think you'll be really impressed. Uh, they are joining us tonight because we're here to talk about lists, which is an important part, I feel, of hunting and has, has always been something that I've utilized when I've been trying to hunt. I'm going to run through the chat right now and just shout out some awesome people that have been here with us. And then we're going to get this uh, discussion rolling. We had Perry Comics right off the bat talking about Caleb, although uh, maybe I missed Caleb's uh, comments there before uh, before that is happened. Is he serious or is he joking right now? I hope he's joking around. I'm waiting for an LOL from Caleb right now. Is he Is he heckling me? There was some confusion over the thumbnail. I know some people are like, all those people are going to be on that show. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll get to that in just a bit here. Mr. Gretzky and Mastodon Comics, uh, Immortal Biggie Jack, Ben Compton is in there, Perry Comics, Just a Recon. Let's see here. You guys are making fun of my. Yeah, I, I know it's not the greatest thumbnail I've ever made. I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to lie. Jason from Comics Misexplained, the other part of the Trinity, if you will, the. Uh, the comics unlimited comic core unlimited trinity old wolf always in the chat what a great community member chad 90 miles from comics is in the chat bake the snake caleb i see you in there as well let's see here oh my gosh this list goes on and on and on some awesome people okay so let me tell you about thank you all for joining us i appreciate that Absolutely. yes thank you all let me explain the panelist side of this when I first started talking with Tony Sanders and JD about doing this idea for a show, uh, we sort of culled together a little group from the, the comic community to be the panelists on this show. And we discussed early on that, you know, we don't want to have an overwhelming number of us. So it was just the idea that whoever could make it anytime we did the list, the panelists are always welcome. So if TJ's bouncing around and he wants to come online, he is more than welcome. Tony Sanders, who that comics and movies, these guys are always welcome. Beyond that, it's always nice to have a guest to sort of add to what we're doing. So tonight, the panelist that I'm having is JD. But if you see the thumbnail, I listed all the panelists because I really want to shout those guys out every time. They, they kind of helped create, craft this idea for a show. Oh, yeah. In that first episode, we did a two hour marathon chat and those guys were all just champions. Yeah, I mean cool. it's 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 a great premise for a show because we're inviting anybody on the the panel just to come in at any point and join. Yeah, if we're talking and Jeffrey Comic Con says, "Hey, oh, I want to add a point right here. I don't have much time," and he wants that's the whole point of the panel that those those people and then it allows also for me, like a lot of the gentlemen here, you got kids, you got work, you've got all these things going on. 
It's nice right. to know you don't have to show up every single time. Right. Instead, it's like, you know what? If you're free, come on by and hang out. Well, I'm going to go to the guests right off the bat. I really want to do the, the topic that I always kind of wanted to get to at the beginning of the show whenever we do the list is what was that first comic that you really like put on a list, spent time, planned, and hunted down to purchase? And I'm going to go to Adam first. Adam, what was that first book that was like, I really had to think this one through and plan for it. Uh, that's an easy one. That That's X-Men 101. Uh, this one right here. A uh, little Chris Claremont signature on there. Love his signature. Um, for me, the reason I decided I wanted this book, other than I've always loved the X-Men, uh, X-Men, the, the cartoon in 92 back in the day, really probably got me into, into nerding uh, when you think about it. But... Um, I just, I love this cover. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. I, I, I just, there's so much action happening in this cover. It's, but it's still, it's not too busy. It's still clean. Um, it's just beautiful. The water, the yellow. I love the color yellow. Um, so I this always love Scott's mouth open, the water like rushing yeah. in, and he's just wailing. I just love yeah, it. He's, he's clearly struggling there. Yeah. Um, and but in Storm's kind of like pretending like she's struggling because she's awesome. She could do anything. But yeah, yeah this one, I just uh, like I had a little in my, um, you know, in, in my phone, I just had like in my notes, just when I started in 2017, getting back into collecting, I was like, OK, so these are what seem like the key issues that I might want. I think the first appearance of Electra was on there because I was a big Daredevil fan and I was watching the TV series at the time. And 168. Uh, th yeah, things like that. But. This is the one I decided on because I'm like, I want something that I can put up on my wall. So sure. that's what this decision was. It took me, it took me kind of a while to get it. It took me, I don't know, four or five months to sort of settle on where am I in terms of a grade? Um, Cause you know, the book was kind of hot at the time. Um, it's cooled off a little bit, but yeah, that was my first one. And obviously when you, once you, you know, break that seal, you <laughs> find a few more of them. <laughs> and there, Right. Yeah, and, and and I mean, I, I mentioned before we went live that that was one that's been on my list for a while that I'm working towards, but I'm hoping we'll go down a little bit before I make my drop my purchase. <laughs> JB, what about you? What was that first book? I don't have it. I, you know, I, but I remember. I, I've gone through. I have so many books, guys. Man, you Dude. don't need to hold it up. You just tell us what the book is. Um, what was that book for you? The first book that I remember really bugging my dad, like, "Dude, we got to go. It's going to come out. We got to go get it." Or that I that I iconically remember was when Wolverine was having a one in four series release, and it was oh, number one. Miller. And number one of the number one in four series, I was like, I, I have to have this. The this is the most important thing. We get, get now. Let's get. Let's go. And uh, and I had it. So, and I have it somewhere. But I have That's a true. lot of freaking boxes right now that I'm going through. Uh, the entire you have the original copy company. that you purchased. Yeah, I do. It, I know it's in one of these boxes. It's That's gotta right. be. Yeah. So, because all I have them all. I have all my old stuff. All that stuff that I had when I was a kid, I still have it. It's wow. great when you can go back. I, I still love, look at some of them and I tell people the story of like a, a book that means nothing to some people. And you look at it and you're like, you guys don't know. This was like such an iconic book for me when I picked it up. And uh, that's your Wolverine one and that's your X Men 101. I mean, that's yeah. a great moment. Yeah. Yeah, when right. You that book and you're like, that's I, I need to have that one. And then you get it, and then you uh and then the list just grows from there, right, JD? Yeah, <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> uh now when we when we first started doing this, we were also discussing a lot of what were the what are the like resources that you use to help kind of narrow down choices, make decisions mm -hmm. about price and cost and 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 come to a decision that fits your budget and your preferences. Uh, JB, was the, what are some of the resources that you found that you've been using? Recently, since I've actually been educated now in the community or before, you know, when you first come in and you're just kind of buying all kinds of crazy, <laughs> or when I when you actually watch a few shows and they put you onto some resources like Go Collect and getting the fair market value of the certain grades and and ebay and looking at souls <laughs> sale and uh, you know when you learn that those are the two main ones because that's telling you what is something going for right now um i think when you first get 
collecting, you go to the to the comic book store and you go, hey, you know, uh, where do where do I look up prices? And they play <laughs> this book, uh, which is a cool book, but realistically, unless you're buying stuff that's not moving very much, that book's basically dead by the time it's printed, right? Uh, you know what you know what I'm talking about? The uh, Overstreet Guide? Right. Okay. So, but unless you're buying Golden Age, which I'm not buying Golden Age, stuff right. that's not moving as quickly, when you're buying stuff that's getting released and variants and covers and one in tens that you don't want to pay ratio on and you're trying to right. scoop up, you know, you're, you're looking at the other resources uh, when you're trying to buy slabs that are, you know, within the last 20 years, you know, you're, you're looking at Go Collect and, and eBay. So those, are, I think, are the two main resources for checking pricing when you're on the hunt to purchase something. And sure. and as much as it's been volatile, yeah, get me wrong. I would say it is. It what you're talking about is when those they kind of almost stabilize it for a short time when they're all around the same level. When you're around that same level at the same time, your go collect, your eBay solds. Okay, all these books are 325, 325, 325. They're all 325 at that time. Whatever book it is, let's say it's um, I don't know, whatever ASM you want to pull, you know, a modern book, three hundred dollars or something. Everybody knows it's that. And it stabilizes a little bit. And then you have the little spikes here and there. But it's so cool when that moment when you have that group of, you know, the five resources all agree. And that's one of the things I yeah. see much more in the moderns than I see anywhere else where it's it's so amazing that you it's it's popular or it's that much of a buy and sell environment with less books on the market. Let's be honest, there are less books now on the market than there were in the 90s, you know, yeah. there more and what's going on now is a stabilization which is kind of good and i always say that you guys are pretty much like the guys that are buying the new stuff and moving them back and forth and swapping them out are definitely stabilizing the market yeah and, and adam what about you when you when you're hunting a, a, a grail book a, a book that you've always wanted is there a resource that you trust a lot or that you implement in your uh, in your planning for your list well honestly when when you first said what is the resource that most helped me buy that first book <laughs> the first thing that came to mind was paypal credit but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you meant you meant like education like educating me right yeah, just, just, yeah, just a, tool that, a tool that would give you the knowledge to feel like this is a good price and this book fits what i want uh honestly there were okay there was one conversation and there was one website i went to a small con at a community college near me um like four months after I started collecting, and I was sitting there, looking, looking at purchasing an eight dollar like Batgirl special from nineteen eighty eight or something like that. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like haggling with this guy. I'm like, would you take seven for it? And the guy next to me is haggling with him over buying a Fantastic Four number three for like oh, a little more than six bucks, right? And he's like, he's like, will you take this sort of payment and that sort of payment? And he's like, I gotta have this book, man. I just gotta have it. And the guy's working with him. And I could see how important that book was to this guy. And I'm like, what? Nobody's talking about the Fantastic Four right now. Why? I got to educate myself. So, of course, I go online. And I found a website that I think really sort of helped crystallize things for me. And I don't want to, like, you know, give someone a free plug here. But um, sellmycomics.com, I think it is. Uh, they do, like, a top 100 list. Of oh, the biggest, yeah, yeah. I know those dudes. Yeah. Biggest, most important key books every year. And they show you um, how far up and down they've gone in one year's time. So yes. I just sort of use that as a default list of, I, I went through the 100 list and some of the comics I just wasn't interested in because they didn't appeal to me personally. But I was like, okay, so that's an important comic and that's how much I should expect to pay. So, you know, it just gives you a taste of, of what the big first appearances are, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we're not, I, the, point of, the point of this show is definitely not to say these are resources you have to use, but I'll tell you as somebody that is still feeling oh, yeah. very unsure about I like my, that my comic site more resources is just better, right? Like, like the more ways that you can look at decisions like this sideways, I think the better, especially when you're talking about a, a real big book <coughs> wanted and you're looking for that one copy that like Adam said earlier is gonna be the one I'm hanging on my shelf and yeah. I'm looking at and caring about so significantly. Um, Jay, I'm sorry, JD, you were mentioning, was it my comic shop? 
Yeah, uh, sell my comics. Um, what he was talking about. What Bear, I've actually. It's kind of a. They they always ask to buy your books, but they give you free information even if you don't use them. And it. He's right. It's got. A, but it's got like top sixty goriest covers and and it's kind of good because it's like it and where they are and where they're the higher the price, the lower the price, and with links to where it's traded, it's pretty good. Um, I will say they are very accurate on everything, including the golden age. They are very accurate. Which is a rarity. I know that you guys on the yeah. golden guys have talked about that a lot, finding yeah. accuracy on a golden yeah, pretty, age. Yeah, pretty uh, accurate on the momentum because it even says who knows where this pre-code horror thing is ever going to end. They used to put out some YouTube videos too that I, I felt were kind of aggressive in trying to get you to buy higher grade uh, key books because they're, they're sell my comics. They take comics yeah. and they to people. And this guy, he, I think he had a British accent and he was like, there's no reason to get this in a 5.0 when you can get it in a six. Just don't eat, st don't drink Starbucks for three months and you'll be so glad you did. And I'm just like, okay, that's all right. Just don't have groceries, you know, like you know, ramen, only ramen. Yes. And I'm like, you are a East charming British man. You're not going to, you're not going to sucker me. Come on. <laughs> I wanted to shout. We got a few people in the chat that have joined us. Comic Man, Andy, Sam, I am Comics. Thank you guys for coming by. Uh, I would say that Comic Miss Explained has been just making me laugh. He's just very, very funny. Um, he says so, that, he says that uh, JB is breeding his packages behind the scenes. So I know. I know. <laughs> it's the pile is going down Thursday. Four boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so funny though. Yeah, and then the pop box that we opened today, that was a big box that took the stack down. That was. And if you guys haven't been watching Discovery Bay's channel, I mean, he's got daily videos looking at the at the plans for the, the, the shows that are running that day. Did, today he did a great new segment on Instagram shout that I thought was really, really fun. He's been adding all kinds of cool special effects, like you got lasers cut and blasting through th th things. It's been Maybe cool. Jack inspired. Okay, first of all, I want to give a huge shout out to Burke Nasty Fifty Four Comics, Steve Berkland, and because uh, I was in an after show chat with him and the guys from Chino, Manny and Chino, and I asked him, I said, Dude, "What could I add?" And he said, "Well, do do something about Instagram, man. You're on there every day." And yeah, that's a good one. All right, so that was the Instagram tag of the day, and I put it right in the middle of the lineup, so that tells you how many shows there are right in the middle. And then he also said, um, "Cause dude, you got to open them damn boxes." I'm like, yeah. <laughs> "Yeah, you're right. I'll just open one a day. That's a good idea." And those are like the two favorite segments of the whole damn show now. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Good Where stuff. You? Thanks, Steve. Appreciate you. And then Biggie <laughs> Shack said, "Hey, man, why don't you have like lasers and stuff?" So I was like, "All right." So I I did a gif with some laser beams. He goes, "No, man. I I was expecting you to shoot them out of your fingers." All right. So the next day when I when I pointed up to the click the link right here, I shot laser beams out of my fingers for Biggie Shack and I put a little size in for Biggie Shack. <laughs> Man, I, I can't even remember this community without Biggie Shack. And what was it like before? <laughs> yeah. It was a lot quieter. Yeah. He's been great. Uh, that was a good one. So we then today was explosions. Today was explosions because I I downloaded an explosion pack. So right. I had two big explosions and then the logo was behind there. Anyway, I'm having a good time with it. Sorry. Go ahead. Very good. Oh, I had a question there, John, about uh, about Bear and uh, JB's lists. Your kindness, on um, what you're looking for. What is it now? What are you? What are your goals for this year that you're trying to achieve? Adam, why don't you go first? I'm sorry. Um, this is not going to be a very fun answer, but my goal for this year is to not really spend much more money on comic books until. <laughs> Until next uh, no, year, like, um, I, listen, I won. I won uh, a a big book for me, a big important book for me, which was the Detective Comics, uh, three fifty nine, the first Batgirl, and I, I have like a, a sense of peace right now. Right, yeah, that was a and I want to make sure I live in that moment and not feel desperate to get my next book. Like I really, I've spent a lot of money. I spent too much money this year, guys. I really have. So I just, I gotta, I gotta sort of shut it down for big books. But twenty twenty, this one right here. Boom. Gotta have it. I got. I gotta have it at some point. Big, big that was on my list for the, this year, and I, yeah. I, I think you saw me unbox. Yeah, it. right behind me, show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I probably that one. Yep. Uh, Rock and JB, what are you? Yeah. 
What do you have on your list that you're trying to complete this year? Are you a completed? I, you know, uh, I, I did not create a list this year. I watched okay. some of the coolest videos on YouTube in January about lists. This is my, you know, this is what I'm hunting. This is, yep. and I thought it was cool. And I'm like, you know what? I want to make a list. And and I've told this story before. This is true, and it's it's coming along slowly. Yeah, I said Dangerous. instead of me trying to acquire ten books. How about if I figure out a way to get a book a week out of this collection into somebody else's collection? Wow. So I started sending out books. And you there's people in, in the chat that have gotten some of these books. And I'm like, I got to figure it. And if you pay attention and listen, there's stuff that people need, miss, want that you have that you're not doing anything with. Absolutely. So I started plucking them. You know, and like Rod and Goofy books too, stuff that's not even worth anything really, but it completes run for people. And I started oh, right. them. that's and a huge thing on the list. Yeah. And and I said, that's my goal this year. If I could do that once a week, that's 52 times I will have taken something out of this collection and put it into somebody else's hands. Well, the auctions have helped too, I think, because I've sold some shit dirt cheap, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I have sold some shit dirt cheap. But I know some of that stuff is for people's collections. Mm. And that's the way this community is, man. Hey, let's take that, put it back in the community so I can take that money and go back in the auction. Because I don't know if you saw, there was a comment in here. One of the best parts of YouTube auctions is watching JB buy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't bought from me. That's yeah, you right. From me. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Guys, I would uh, love to see some sort of some sort of database, like an AOK -okay database kind of, where people can go and sort of drop little hints about what they would like to add to their collection. I mean, not like too overt, but I think that'd be a great idea. Well, there's a, there's there's a, a guy. list, what are you talking about? There's a list. Yeah. That's Arby. the show. That's the Arby. show. Arby. You know, 0206. What? Every I, Friday or Saturday is the comic community want list. Thank you. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember the name of the channel. Say it again for us. RW Wheatley 0206. It's every Friday or Saturday he puts out a list. In conjunction with, you know, Medrog's doing the weekly comic contest every Thursday at 10 a.m., but our Wheatley's putting this out, not as consistent which time, Friday or Saturday, but it's called the Comic Community Want List. It's perfect. And all you're yes. doing is saying what you're looking for. And you can look at what people are asking for. Hence, you got yeah, it. It's, it's, it's a really clever idea and, and, and brings a lot of fun community elements in as far as like helping one another, highlighting interest in certain books and where it's going. And yeah, I've, I've watched. It's really good. I'm sorry. I couldn't remember. Right. Comic Man Andy, uh, check my shows on Friday or Saturday. Or, on Friday or Saturday. He's in one of those almost every week. I normally point to the link uh, for his show. So This, this, this show up. has helped a few people complete lists. I know that because we've been... Yeah. Everybody's been on. We've been sending books back and forth. This hey, you want to hit the chat real quick? We got a lot of new people. Yeah, I was just about to jump in there. There's some very funny That's guys. Good. Bueller's good. been in here a little bit. Thank you for coming by, Bueller. I much appreciate it. RJ Taylor, Big O is in the chat. Uh, HAQ79 is in the chat. Comic at 84 came by. Thank you, sir. Uh, Kachung and Delphia are in there. Comics, uh, sorry, Chaos and Comics. Comic Foo. Beautiful. Uh, D Runk is in the chat. The Slab Dragon TJ is in the chat. Nice. nice. So nice. many awesome people. Thank you all for coming yeah. by. Thank you for coming, everybody. And please, please, if you are unfamiliar with Adam from Bear Island, JB from Discovery Bay, JD, or myself, our links are to our personal channels are in the description below. Although I think I actually got to add JD's in because I wasn't, I, it was the last second. I didn't know JD was coming. No uh, worries. No worries. By so the way, shame on me. My uh, notifications were off for our Wheatley. Uh, Come on. I've, I've now you know. Now you know. Part of so, what I wanted to discuss tonight is perfect for what you're just talking about as far as the community want list. I wanted to talk a little bit about community because I think collecting, especially when you're a kid, it doesn't happen without somebody allowing, right? Without somebody encouraging or allowing. And, and for me, it was my mom who was very encouraging of collecting comics. She's a teacher and I think she felt like it's reading and my kids love to read. I'm just going to let it happen. So a lot of my early comics were she gave me money. I could go to the Circle K Spinner Rack or the 7-Eleven Spinner Rack or occasionally she would drive me to a comic shop and let me buy books. So I, 
definitely the roots of my collecting are in the time spent with my mom and the permission that she gave me to engage in this collecting. So, uh, JD, you, I've never asked you this question, so I'd love to hear it from you. What were some of the people that kind of uh, allowed you to get into this? Okay, my cousin Brendan is number one, and he he does watch occasionally uh, on the show. But uh, my cousin Brendan for sure is number one. Uh, he's older than I was, and we were going down to Williamsburg, Virginia, in 1982. This was, uh, oh, summer, summer of 1983, sorry, summer of 83. We're down there in Williamsburg, and he's about to go be a Marine and everything else. And he, we're in Leesburg, Virginia at his house, and he brings me over a stack of comic books. And my first time ever grabbing one, I says, you know, I have a few, star, I have a Star Wars one, and I've got a few other ones. And he's like, yeah, these are some Thors. And this is, and I'm like, okay. So I started getting these books. Mm -hmm started reading them and stuff like that i was about nine and then that when i turned 10 i started buying and it was that was definitely number one who sat me down and spider-man he went off to the marines uh you know we still keep in touch now he i mean we still talk comics he's still he's the same way he's got all these iron man tony stark stuff all over his place he's always was an iron man he kept his iron man he gave <laughs> me four books he gave me like four books and it was just great. I'll never. I, he's actually. There's a picture of me like this, and him like there, looking up like this. It's a Polaroid, and it literally has like this. And my mom says this was the start of it. You know, this was when you started doing everything. You know, reading all those books, and that was it. It was number one. Uh, number two would have to be obviously my parents and everything else like that. But but I'm gonna just not just my cousin and my parents. I'd never really get get in the way of it or caring. Uh, the the guy you went to the shop any every day with was it your friend or whatever that guy would sit there and you know if you had a choice between two books and you had two bucks you made that choice which two books you were going to get and that guy would always be saying whatever one you don't want i'll get and then you'd swap them and trade them back and forth <laughs> those, those 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 are us you know that's exactly that's awesome. how that's so that's exactly the, the that's the next one. whoever it was. I mean, whether it was Pat, Joe, or you know, whoever we were going in the na neighborhood, sitting there reading books like you would have seen before nice. the video games, before the dark times. So right. I did <laughs> a Battlefront too. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, what about what about you, Adam? What were some of those people for you? And I, I, I'll I'll get to the chat too in a second because they're shouting out some great ones, personal people for them that that really got them going. But what about you, Adam? Yeah, man, for me, it started with uh, bedtime stories. My dad figured out that a fun way to do that, to get me to go to sleep, would be to tell superhero stories, but not say their names, just say their initials. Like Wonder Woman was WW, Green Lantern was GL. Like he would just make up these stories, and I would have to, in my mind, come up with the name on my own, which became like a counting sheep type exercise. And I was asleep in no time. So uh, he, he liked to make up those stories. I'm not writing this down as we speak. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody with children are writing down this wonderful technique that we just found out. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So my dad, you know, everyone loves my dad after seeing that back row video, but he, uh, <laughs> he got it all. He got it all started. Secondly, it would have to be my brother because uh, we were going through a trading card phase, you know, baseball cards, basketball cards, that type thing. And my brother, who has always been cooler than me, decided he didn't want to do that anymore. He wanted comic books. And I was like, oh, okay, that you can read the thing. And it's not just numbers on the back. Yeah. This is cool. I like this. Um, so he's he's always sort of led the way in coolness in my family. So I followed him in. Uh, and then the other one is this kid named Chris Bordeaux. How French of a name is that? Chris Bordeaux was was my best buddy in middle school. And uh, he, uh, he loved comic books. He loved to draw. And he was really good, really good at it. We had French class together. And, of course, since he was, he was French-Canadian, we lived Detroit as, you know, Dual, some people have dual citizenship and things in Canada. It's real close to the border. Um, he had already taken French in his in all of his classes in like elementary school, so he could breeze through French. And he and I just like screwed around, and like he gave me drawings of his, and I was his inker. So like that sort of cemented. And like we we take trips to Canada to like you know uh, whatever comic shops were over in Windsor, across from Detroit, and um, he he sort of you know that was the first friend who was my age who was into it. And we, we got in trouble in class so many times for, for just drawing superheroes. Like the teacher would be like, enough of this. Come on, guys. <laughs> That's funny. 
Nice. So. And I, I think a lot of us have those, like, uh, you know, you're draw as a kid, you find yourself drawing these characters at different points. Oh, yeah. It's fun that you talked about inking and, uh, and, and doing that with friends and, Everybody's got that book, maybe that you act, you, you decided I'm gonna put a piece of paper on it and I'm gonna trace it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna practice my Jim Lee drawings by by pressing onto it. I think I still have a first bishop, where uh, in X Men, with that I you can uh, feel can feel like Braille the the ridges of me tracing bishop over and over again. Uh, oh, this was a crappy oh, seminar I went to about about a year ago. The shitty s seminar. That's all the notes I took. <laughs> <laughs> My wife said she wanted me to draw a group from the Guardians too. I'm like, hey. Yeah. I think Gee, some people are just going to doodle and stuff when they're when they're bored. Uh, you know, some of us are just programmed that way. I needed an anchor there. <laughs> uh, so, so, so JB, for you, what were some of the people that that got you going, or at least encouraged and allowed this uh, collecting thing to take take hold? Well, I think most anyone that's watched me, you know, do a live, they know I've talked about my old man. Uh, my dad was a, a single father who raised me in San Francisco, um, and he was young. Man, looking back on it, I must have been cramping his style. <laughs> he was only 21 when he had me, so I don't know how old it was. I, I think it was maybe, when did Star Wars come out? 78? 77. 77. 77. About five. That's, I think, when I, we started going down to the comic book stores. Down, uh, We would take the, uh, the, the bus. Everything was bus in the city. And we'd take the bus down to the comic store, and, and, and he'd pick me. He was buying stuff for himself when I was five, but I was going through some of his stuff. And as I got older, we continued to go to the comic book store, and I got big time into X-Men and Wolverine. And, and my dad was always you know, looking at the wall because the comic store had the wall. <laughs> He'd be pointing to Avengers and Fantastic Four and, and early spider Man's and going, kid, you're buying the wrong shit, man. You're wasting your money on that shit. That's all worthless. And I'm like, Dad, what are you talking to? Wolverine will kick anybody's ass. We, he'll kill them all. And my dad, it's like, oh, you don't even know. Yeah. Uh, so my dad was a huge influence. And then in grade school, there was a couple of kids. You know, that when I read this question, I need to look these guys up, man, because – I don't think I've actually even reached out to them. Uh, but there was a, there was a bro couple brothers that were big into comic books, and one of them used to draw a lot of comics. And this was in fifth, sixth, seventh grade. And I bought a, some of my early runs of X-Men from him. Because I, I really started a solid run of X-Men at like 140, uh, and then it went all the way into the 200-somethings before wow. I started. And in a, there was a good chunk of that that I had bought from this kid. And uh, I need to look him up, man. I'm, and I'm glad the show came about because I wrote down his name. And I'm like, you know what? I need to look those guys up and see what they're doing. Because <laughs> they were a big influence, you know. And when you have someone else that's doing comics and, you, and you're like, shit, dude, my, guy, my dad's going to stack of comics this big right next to the nudie books. No, I'm joking. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> you know, just, just, you know, another outlet to, to read comics and. And I used to just marvel at their collection because they were always there were there were bags not boarded. Because back in the day, I don't think anybody had really boards. I remember, you know, being able to bag stuff, but we didn't really put boards on them. But uh, I had a lot of stuff uh, that I thought was in great condition, you know. And so you look at it now, and you're like, "What the fuck was I thinking? Why was I bagging that?" And then all the shit that I never bagged, the stuff that my dad had, the stuff that. Well, my dad's stuff, my dad's stuff my dad had it was his. But there was stuff he gave me, like key, gold key comics. I never bagged any of that shit. I was like, nah, that shit's worthless. Yeah, okay. <laughs> when I started looking them up. All my shit was basically worthless, kind of, you know, except some of the X-Men. Um, but some of those gold key that my dad had was like, holy shit, I can't believe this is worth if I wouldn't have just left it in this box just Unbagged mildewing, yeah. even worse. Killing, yeah, it happens. It happens. Well, I mean, I go into antique shops. I hear stories. Nothing surprised me. You at least take care of them. I know people that say, but nobody knew gold keys and were ever going to be because there were so many. The same thing with I don't know. right. You never know because I was like I was joking one time with another book and. Uh, I said this was like literally a five to ten dollar book forever. 
at the most. And now it's like, oh, the first Beta Ray Bell. I mean, I'm shocked at what's going on with it because I'm like, geez, I, I, that's mine. You know, that was my first book I ever bought with my own money. So I'm like, that that makes that makes you really think because then you're like, sixty cent purchase, five to ten bucks for, you know, thirty years, thirty three years, and then all of a sudden in two years, it's a hundred and fifty dollar book. <laughs> oh. oh no. Did you read that from Miss Explain? No, good. Well, uh, he's glad as his mom thought. Oh, geez, wow. Oh. Those throwaway stories, you know, like the my dad has the baseball card version of that, where he had, you know, all the early baseball cards. He had some mantle baseball cards and some, you know, Babe Ruth baseball. And then Grandma was like, "Oh, I don't need these. I'm just gonna throw them away." Yeah. Like he's off, he's he's gone off to college. I just want to clear some space out. Yeah. Yes. My dad would never took care of his. They're all stacked up. It was just a stack, you know, but he wanted them. They were important to him. And he I mean, took them from me when I ripped the centers out of them. <laughs> I would have had a stack of some of those dirty ones, like R. Crumb and stuff like that. He had some of the dirty yeah. ones. I'll stack them right back up. <laughs> <laughs> There's some great comments going on in the chat. People talking about, like, uh, Kachung mentions he had a Star Wars one that his mom got for him when he was seven. Mm. And he started collecting that when he first saw, and then he started looking, saw when he saw Predator and Aliens. Um, that's pretty awesome. Uh, Perry says, I hated reading in high school. My brother made it cool to read. Punisher explicit comics were still badass for a 13 year old to get into reading. <laughs> I think that's great. Read comic foos. That's a great one right there. I'm you gotta be a proud papa right there. I missed that one. Sorry. Um, I took my son eleven to the store the other day. He picked out a toy he wanted, and then he saw a Silver Age Hawkman six on the wall. Put back the toy and walked out with his first ever Silver Age. Yeah. Yeah. That's that is a awesome. proud moment. Yeah, that was a proud papa moment there. So oh. very cool. So I got help on my list. A big list week for me. Uh, okay, I was going over the strange tales once I was missing, and the Doctor Strange and everything else. First, uh, last week on the hunt, I showed I picked up this one. Oh, I got this back from Paul. Uh, Ooh, how'd it turn out? Very nice. I'm sending it off to CEGC this week, along with a I've, few keys. I've heard good things about him and, and pressing. Uh, I'm very impressed with this. I mean, I believe I gave him a. I'll probably say at best a one and a half to a two. And I'm looking at a probable, a full, um, my goal is a two and a half now, you know? Nice. Just, well, yeah. For a book like this, I'll take it straight for transparency, Dr. Strange. Nice. That's huge. RJ Taylor says he got his first Iron Man number one from his dad. Nice. Uh, he had His dad had it in Vietnam and he'd read it a hundred times on the aircraft carrier that he was on. And then RJ got it pressed and sent it in, and it came back at 3.5. Nice. Very good for you. Good for you. You, you preserved it, more importantly. Yes. Uh, this I got on the hunt. This was just – That thing survived it. Vietnam. Oh. Yeah, that's that's a classic. You say that one. Uh, this I got back today from CGC. This is my Strange Tales 151 from December of 66. This I showed on, uh, on an unboxing I did today, but signed by Jim Steranko, and right here it says – Jim Stranko's first work for Marvel, finishing that Strange Tales run. But the biggest one I got was the one big key of the Doctor Strange run I didn't have. My good friend, Tony Sand. Oh, I saw nice. this. Surprised me out oh, of yeah, nowhere. Yeah. And, you know, cool. I, I, thank you very much again, Tony. Uh, completed this. I'm very happy. It's perfect. Uh, looks great. JD, can you show us that Steranko signature? I, I just want to see how beautiful that signature is. Uh, the better one you could see his signature is this. I might as well show this because this one shows up better on camera. It's not black on black, but that's Steranko. God, look at that. That is it's art. It's more art. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. On here, it's kind of hard to tell because he actually said, he goes, that's the one thing about Kirby. When he had me do my first work ever, left me no place to sign my big name. I wanted a big name on there. <laughs> you know, it was good. This is his first work. It actually, it's funny that CGC puts this on the slab. I didn't, I mean, I knew it was his first work, but I didn't know they were going to put it on the slab. But they did. Yeah. 
we were we were talking about this before we went live and and, and um you know andy and i saw so adam and i were, were mentioning this but maybe jb and and jd want to jump in as far as like artists or writers who have a really powerful signature i, I was joking that donny cates's signature and i've got a bunch of them are really yeah. kind of like jittery and and, and, and kind of wild but obviously what about adam freaking so, hughes steranko has a gorgeous signature yeah. The, is there JB? Is there a signature that you've seen on a book that you're like this writer or this artist has a killer signature? No, you know I'm just now starting to get into more of the uh, sign stuff. And I, I don't have a really iconic one, and and I want to get too far off point real quick. But I do have that comic that my dad had that I want to tell a real quick story. If you got a second, do it. Yeah, so go. This comic right here, I got my yeah. hands on as a kid, and as a child, I couldn't read. Couldn't read. But I was, I was flipping through it, and as a kid, I yanked the center out. And my dad was through And he took this book away, and I never saw it again until recently, until I was older, and I bought Avengers 350. Because on the back of 350, it's a double-sized issue. Uh. I finally got to read that issue <laughs> 53 nice i finally got to read that issue much later the issue and i and i and i was like man why does this look so familiar man why is this holy shit this is that book my dad took away from me and i finally got to read it which by the way this is a really cool issue because I, I you know magneto runs kind of like game on everybody um good issue and then you know when my dad passed away i finally got it and then now i have it on the wall Thanks to, I believe this was Manny at the home of the New York Warriors. And I got one on the wall now, signed, is my little remembrance. I still have my dad's book. Who's the Who's the signature on that? Roy? Uh, Roy, uh, Roy? Roy Thomas. Like Roy Thomas. Roy Thomas. Yeah, it's Roy Thomas. Just trying to... So, uh, like the the chat is throwing out some really great signatures, and I know that uh, DS mentioned Walt Simonson. Yeah, I've gotten a couple of different ones, and man, I'll tell you what, some of the Stan Lee's that I got, even though you know they're all certain and everything, they don't look very good. Yeah, it's not a great. You know, it's this kind of way you got them, you know. You know, different years. I mean, the last six years have been tough. It, it, when you look at the signature on the cert, yeah, and then you look at the signet, yeah. you know, you can tell it's still him, but man, he was, man, yeah, struggling. Well, Dan, Dan, Dan Jurgens is a great one, very good call, Mr. Gregory. Dan Jurgens is a class act and he, he signs a lot of good books, yeah. Uh, Adam was mentioning Claremont, obviously, he showed a Claremont signature right at the beginning of the show. Uh, yeah. is, is there any of that you like beyond Claremont to Adam that you are a fan of? A little sleeper pick. I really like Will Spartacios. If you can see it right there. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, um, pretty nice. Just It's very up and down and just like, I don't know. I, I just think it's fun. And he just signs his first name like, hey, I'm Will, so you know who I am. <laughs> if, if, if anybody's is terrible, the worst is Adam Hughes. I think that's hands down. Just the AH. AH and AH place. It's so yeah. stupid. Yeah. And it looks exactly yeah. like what's already on the book. Yeah, he doesn't do anything to add any flavor and anything to it. But we're gonna forgive him because of other things that he does. <laughs> right. He has a, he knows how to draw headlights. Sure. He has to say, we forgive him for boobs. Um, <laughs> I was gonna, I, like I've always been a big fan of Mike Zek and the way he does his signatures oh, yeah, on books. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just because I grew up reading a lot of Mike Zek and I've always liked his stuff anyways, but like you see you see that signature and he does the big O. I think it's Mike O Zek, right? He does the big O. Yeah, that's cool. A big everybody likes a big O. Um, oh, Capullo. Uh, Very good. Chad, 90 yeah. miles from comics says Capullo. And then the comic man, Andy says, hashtag booby. Jock does, Caleb. <laughs> Jock too. But very cool. Yeah, Jock. Um, so I was going to discuss a little bit with uh, how being in this comic community might be changing the way that you make a list or the way that you oh, for sure. list, or the way that your collecting has evolved. Um, it, JD, how about you? I'll go to you. you you've been uh, in this community just as long as I have. I, I know these yep. guys. I don't know about you guys. I think you guys have came around the same time. But uh, what, how has it affected you, this sort of time in the community? As far as my list go, um, it's helped me complete it for sure. Also, it made me um, 
I will be honest with you. Watching my shows on the recaps, watching other shows and everything else, and rewatching them has changed a lot of what I've been doing on my list. I totally shrunk my. I'm shrinking down to focusing on my favorite characters only, and that's it. When I was poorly, burly, when I first started getting into the YouTube, I was like, I'm seeing myself, and I say, okay, I see what's going on. This is a good time to focus in on what I want to collect and it totally fo it focused me more. The community focused me, I would say. That's a great way to describe it for sure. What, what about you, Adam? Ha has has making videos, being in, in watching videos and being sort of on Instagram and, and YouTube, has it affected or it can, does it continue to affect your list making and planning? Every day. Uh, I think it's, there's opposing forces obviously because you're gonna see a lot more books <laughs> people are showing off and you're just like oh i want that yeah. but at the same time i think it's really great i think it's really helps me a lot to see people i respect like jp's budget collecting and you yep. john and uh recently uh comic at 84 made a video in which he said i gotta cut back you guys and like seeing other people have the same thoughts i'm having be like you know what i can still be one of the cool kids and not have to show off a slab every month yeah, we had a whole discussion on that on Unlimited on, on, on this week, how it's perfect, per perfect to do, and everybody should do it, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important because it's you don't want to ever have it become less fun than what it is today. You want it to remain the happiest poem. Once it starts to lose its lust and you feel an angst, mm -hmm. don't take a break. Angst is not worth it. Yeah, you have anxiety more often than not, cut back, you know, completely. Yeah. And we all do it. We all do it. Like, I'm literally so happy I'm to be done with so much stuff. I'm now, now it's about the other side. Now I'm like, what do we do now to reduce the collection? Well, I think it was, it was something like a year ago, or maybe it was like eight, eight months ago that the great legend did one of his episodes discussing jealousy and discussing all these elements. Uh, you know, that's the like flip side of that coin. I think that maybe Adam was talking about where, you know, watching all of this stuff, it's so informative. And a lot of people were mentioning that the amount of information that comic man, Andy says is more inspiration towards completing goals and things like that. But the other side is obviously now I'm seeing more books and thinking like, well, I want one of those and I need one of those and God, I want oh, one of those. It, it, it becomes a thing where you're not necessarily being appreciative of what you've collected and what you've gotten. And it's hard to balance those two things together, the, the envy and, and the appreciation and, and the knowledge. There's a, there's a balance to kind of find there, I think. I mean, there is that FOMO, the fear of missing out that everybody talks about. And uh, I mean, I, 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 I watched it happen on a few things. I'm like, you know what? And I got caught up with that on a certain book, and I think a lot of us did. And we're like, hang on, hang on, I gotta take a break. Just because of that, I was like, not that one time, but it was just that one thing. I said, what's going on? This is not what I thought. But at the same point in time, I love everybody going after the books too. And the fear of missing out. But I would say the best thing is the information's there. And I think we become better collectors because of the community. I think that's the number one thing is we've all become, I think. You know, you're not gonna become a worse collector by watching everything because you'll, you know, help you unless you're like do the opposite of what these guys. Do. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it is some of these guys I watch are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I am officially, I think, four weeks away from FOMO orders. There was a period there where I was literally going to uh, to um, to um, well, I can't remember the name of the fucking um, Jason Aaron or eBay.com. No, no, uh, I was, um, where was I getting all my shit from, man? I can't even, I have boxes and boxes. They were the comics from Earth Murphy. Spider-Man right booth? No, fucking. My, I, my LCS, I just changed it from, um, thank you very much. Golden uh, uh, Midtown, Midtown, Midtown. I was going on Midtown on Wednesdays at whatever, 10 a.m. I think is when they give you next week's list. And I would put a search on there for limit one and just buy them all. Because huh? I was, I didn't want to miss out on something because they were limited to one. So right. that must be like hot, right? I did that for like six straight weeks, and I said, "What the hell am I doing? <laughs> what, <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me?" Yeah. So no, I'm about three or four weeks removed from doing that shit. So I went through that period. I'm done with that. 
you have to every now and then ask yourself, what are you getting out? Like, what is making you the happiest about collecting? Is it getting a new book? Like when you have it in your hands, does it give you happiness? No, I don't think it does. For me, if I get a, a big book, I'm like, oh my gosh, wait till I show everybody this. They're going to freak out and we can share it. And, you know, JD is going to tell some awesome story that, uh, of some other book that it reminds him of or whatever. It just, it's community, man. That That's the most rewarding thing for me. Yeah. But I can definitely tell you the least satisfied I've ever been as a collector was maybe about six months in when I really got into spec hard. And I'm not saying spec's bad. Spec is fine. But if you're if you're getting into like the idea of flipping and things like that, I found that personally to be the least satisfying. I was listening to podcasts about flipping books, and I'm mm -hmm. just like, this is just not fun. Like, you know, I'm buying stuff like, like why do I need this? Why do I need Wonder Twins number two first appearance of Gleek? Because <laughs> Gleek's gonna be great someday. But then I, don't know, I kind of like Gleek. That's kind of a cool book. Nah. Okay. Well, now I've offended everybody, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but and then on the other hand, you, you have impulse purchases where you're like, okay, that wasn't yeah. so bad. Like I bought this after watching the season because I loved it so much and I don't regret this purchase. I regret the timing of yeah. it, but I don't, don't regret this purchase. So yeah. buy what you love. Everyone says it. Caleb just said it in the chat about 10 yeah. minutes ago. Yep. Exactly. I even went through a period where there was like a guy named, I'll shout him out, Daz. He's got a personality. Oh like, yeah, Daz the, I love Daz. Daz the key collector, and he and he does like a three minute video. He got me all pumped up, and I'm like, fucking, what? I'm gonna get me one of those. And next, and then it shows up. I'm like, what the hell was I? Why the fuck did I buy this? Yeah, yeah. I bought a, I bought a lot of a book of an old man Wolverine forty three because I love the character Renegade. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> Gone after like two freaking issues, man. <laughs> <laughs> like a stack of like yeah, I terrible at it. I mean, well done it, but that's like one I'm gonna have. You know, those are giveaways now. You know, uh, well, JP, JP makes the comment too that that, that uh, what makes him the happiest is interacting with other people. Bingo, and and, and that, that that's the that's the juice for him. And I I would totally agree. And I also exactly. think that going along hand in hand with buying what you love is reading what you buy. Yeah, yeah. If you're buying it to read it, and uh, you're probably never going to be disappointed because you, you're going to get something out of it. So, like, I went out and I bought Flash Year One, and I've never bought a Flash book, but I didn't buy it because I was specking on it or I'm going to flip it. I bought it because somebody saw that said this is a great jumping on point. You might enjoy reading this, and it was just good fun to read. And now tomorrow or whatever Wednesday, I'm picking up Part Four. It's How many times? If somebody recommended something that you would have never bought, like Little Bird. I never bought this. Who's going to recommend Little Bird, though? You, who, who is he paying? Oh, is he paying ad time now? Alec, I think, is the only is person the enough to recommend Little Bird. No, I think the Roku Burrow recommended it to me. I love uh, Little Bird, honestly. And I great. thought it was awesome. I love number one. I can't wait to get my hands on number two. Yeah, I, it, it, it's... It's if you're if you're reading the things that you're buying, odds are you're gonna cull all the things that you don't like, and you're gonna find that what you're left with is enjoyment. You're right. You're gonna enjoy the book and the character and the story and the artwork or whatever is whatever is your 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 jam. I think if you're buying it just for a cover, that's gonna fade at some point. It does. And the, and the covers. I've been saying that for months now, but it's so hard to stop buying great. Yeah, but yeah, but there are certain people, certain people I have a problem with, Delato and Perillo. Right? Sons of bitches, stop putting things out that, because I'm like, ah. how much of that bird? I'm like, at first, I'm like, I think the virgin, I was, I always thought they were dumb, you know. But right. then I look at now, I'm like, oh, they're so great. And now I'm back to saying, God, I like the trade progress better. I don't know. It's just one of those things. But I say, Del, anytime Delato, I find my I don't, but I'm not specking on it. I'm loving the art for that cover, but I'll already have like three other copies of the book, you know, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read the one that's like one in whatever, right? And you really want it or something. But. Well, I also think that ideal and and I, you know is obviously that it's a, a story that you like and a cover that is lights out. Whether it's yeah, the, it's the, the immortal Hulk for you know it would be like an example. I think where people are feeling like. I'm, these covers are incredible, but the story is freaking worth it. And for me, it's again, I, I'll, I'll talk about Catwoman all day. Like, 
Joel goes Joel Jones covers, yeah. and, I, and I like the I like the art germs, but I'm reading it and I'm enjoying the read, or I would have stopped that train months ago. Okay, question on Immortal Hulk because Immortal Hulk's the first one since I've been back into collecting that I just thought that it blew I blew it blown away, right? But mm -hmm. now I've taken it to the point that I have to have every ish every cover of every <laughs> now. Do I really do I need no. the no. I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite. No, you don't. I'm waiting for trades. Why am I buying the fifth printing of something? Right. You know, oh, because I've already got the first four. Shit, now I've got to have them all. So <laughs> I just yeah, sent I away know. one of my second prints. That's the first time I've ever done this. I've never been at a point where, oh, I'm actually early. I was here for one. I've got them all already. So shit, I can easily just buy them all. Now I'm like, when are they going to stop? I don't want to buy any more fucking covers. But I'm so <laughs> I mean, honestly, I gave up on Immortal Hulk because um, I didn't give up on reading it. I decided that this is probably a story that's best read as one short, like a binge. I keep saying uh, this idea, binge comic, like a huge book that comes out all at once. Oh, I'm buying that when that Immortal Hulk omnibus comes out, I'm buying that. That is the one oh, to get. Wow. That would that's be. One, right? I, I bet that's going to be the first one that actually climbs in value because it. This is Al Ewing at his finest. This is a huge arc that deserves its own. You know, it's it's up there. Let's be honest. It's it's never slowing down. This yeah. arc is not slowing down. It's an arc like we've never we haven't seen in years. Congratulations. Well, for in the Marvel world, I know the DC world has had a few. So. The, the cover buying thing is uniquely dangerous, I think, because you can sit there and tell yourself a story about how you, you're doing this for the artist. You're, I'm buying this because I, I want that person to have a job. You know, oh like God. you can tell yourself these little stories and, and find different ways to make yourself buy it. Because we all know J. Scott Campbell is going to go straight down the tubes if I don't buy those covers, right? Yeah. Oh, Secure, Archer, no. Our term's right on the brink of bankruptcy. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> see that book? Who did somebody get that book? I saw. I think Justin Rican got the book. I was talking about the big poster book of that came out last he week. Did. No, the art journal uh, one. Yeah. I, I saw it in the shop and it was sold out the next week. So but we have a lot of art germ color collectors here. I will say yeah. that. Comic Andy's that's the yeah, that's the other one. Die. I think yeah. I went ahead and bought every release of every cover of every and you're like please stop no more hey, and every, every cover has been great you're like oh fuck, i gotta get it I gotta, it I gotta get it has yeah. i officially been uh, optioned uh, I, it has been optioned i want to say as a tv series uh so that means uh, that the, the uh, did they already they did one trade right yes yeah it just came out the first trade that just came out that's the one i'm getting right i'm just i'm sorry i'm switching to trades well, they've only they've only published the first five issues, and now they're on a break, like Image does, you know. And they'll and they'll I love start it. again. I hate it. I've been Southern Bass has been on a four year break. <laughs> hey, I'm all for it if it keeps the quality level high. So. Oh yeah. Oh, I I love creator owned. I will always say I always appreciate creator owned. So uh, I'm gonna wrap us up here. I know we've been, we've been going for an hour, and I appreciate those of you that hung out, even though you were probably maybe expecting story, comic core, and why the last man. Um, we 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 sort of moved our time slot to fill the empty one that they were leaving when they made some scheduling adjustments. So I hope uh, we're not disappointing you in that way. Um, but I like to finish with where you, the status of your list right now. Like, well, what is a book that is new to your list or that is currently on your list that you're really looking for. I know that Adam mentioned his right off the bat, um, but it's his 2020 book. Do you want to, do you want to talk about why that book for you, Adam? Uh, because I've been reading a lot of Swamp Thing. Um, I, know I, I just, I probably just seem like somebody who just, whatever the shows are, I'm reading the books, but I had heard enough good things from, you know, people like JD and I just liked the character. So I'm like, now's probably the time. So this will be my next, Big one probably in 2020. Hopefully the camera is correct. Yeah. Caleb pointed out earlier that I was, that was perfect now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this cover to me, and, and you know, it's not just a cover by, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, this is this is Louise Simonson right here. I mean, that's yeah. that's a cool piece of comic history, and yeah. I think it's just beautiful. And it, it's, I don't know, I'm 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 a Swamp Thing guy right now. Right, I'm right, right, I'm right, right, big, Simon. Yeah, I'm a big Poison Ivy guy right now too. So. Hopefully 2020 can include that and uh, Batman 181, which I, I find funny that there's two famous 181s and there's only one that I can right. ever. 
<laughs> uh, Grave Matter Hulk says, John is picking up Alex's slack. What happened? <laughs> I know it's usually the other way around. Usually Alex, Alex is carrying me, but no, I'm helping out. And uh, it worked out well for everybody. Um, mm. So JB, what's uh, what's been the thing on your list lately that you've been thinking about or, or the, the the books that have like been near the top for you as, as of late? I'm trying to complete the old man's runs of Fantastic Four, so Avengers, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, and then the X-Men is kind of my my one. Zero to 100. I'm okay. Low grade. I'm okay. True believers, you know, saying that that was that issue. But that's kind of the goal to fill those. And that's the long-term goal. And that's an expensive goal, I understand. And yes, I get sidetracked and I buy stuff that doesn't fit that goal. But that is the that is the real goal to fit those four titles into zero to 100 and then kind of call it and say, I did it. Dad, I did it. We did it. And then, um, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Get so your list go. together. We'd like to see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just now going through all the boxes. Have all your adventures. That's to see what ones I'm actually missing. Because now you know, now that I got all the boxes, because at one point, as stuff's coming in, you start scooping and scooping and scooping and putting in a short file. I'll go through it later. I'll go through it later. I'll go through it later. There are boxes you, you. I literally yeah. have modern right next to silver that came in that I'm buying and filling and and oh wait a minute, this one's the better version. So now this one's got to get yep. sold, and and I've got a ton of that. You guys see it every time when I get an auction. I finally sit down and go, oh man, all these silvers are available. I have never sold a Silver Age comic that wasn't an already upgraded. Every nice. single one of them was upgraded. You know? I just upgraded a, uh, a nice mid silver, not a Silver Age key, but I was like a uh, semi list for Avengers because I. I upgraded one with a, a swap, and it was someone's like, "Did you already have that book?" I'm like, "Yeah, but I already, I don't need two of these." Uh, yes, yeah. Silver Sable's kind of popular, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. much yeah. of those JB, how much sleep do you get each night? Okay, well, more than you actually you, you'd expect. Now that uh, I've taken the summer off, kind of um, being daddy daycare, I've been going to bed with the kids, trying to get them down at eight thirty, nine o'clock. And then I get up at 3, 3.30, and, you know, start to, to, to watch YouTube, start to get the list together, start to finalize the, uh, the script, uh, and start just start putting the graphics together. You know, the show, it's funny. Everyone was like, when are you going to get the time down? And I did get the time down. And then I just added more segments to bring the time back up, you know. <laughs> so at one point, I did get the show down to, like, three hours and now I start add another segment. And I add another segment. Those actually take time, you know, to put together. Each one takes time. And then you start shooting laser beams out of your fingertips and having, you know, explosions going off. And they all take a little bit more time. But I think it's worth it. I'm having a blast with it. Yeah, we appreciate you, man. But I want to hear John's answer to the last question. So, well, let's get to JD first. Uh, JD, oh, I'm sorry. You were asking mm -hmm. the. You mean my question of like, what's the book that's on your list yeah. these days? So JD. Yeah, well, Oh, uh, mine that I've been you've made huge progress in all of your Do Doctor Strange runs and things. What what are you working on right now? Uh, I have two more Doctor, one of one run and three two more of the second run, and then the third one I've got about eleven more up to twenty five cent. I have the last twenty five center, and then I have a, a good run of the arcs I like the Dracula arc and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I have one more book by the end of the year I'd like to get and if it's Christmas it's Christmas you know, as long as I get to the end of the year that is Journey into Mystery 84 I'm working on there are a few other strange tales out there but I'm not buying them yet <laughs> working on everything else uh, right now my big thing slab get things slab get things ready to rock start putting them in their things I've already read them now it's time to preserve them so oh by the way John I don't know if you saw my thing. I got my John Jameson book signed. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, my George Perez's first work signed by George Perez. So. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah I was into that yeah. when you got that one out. Two of the only George Perez signed books, the first, the only two ever signed, right here. Wow. <laughs> the census. Just so you know, JD, while you were talking, TJ threw a uh, purple devil at you. So be careful. 
Me? What did I, I didn't say anything. One of no, one of those uh, careful. You may already have them, little devils. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. <laughs> um, for me, uh, I'm always looking to complete runs, and like J like uh, JB mentioned, uh, I've I've got a Daredevil run I've kind of worked on, and then I've got an Avenger early Avengers run. And then lately I've been, I really made a huge hit in this ASM run I'm trying to get. So, I mean, I've, I've got some nasty books to buy that I just can't afford. And so that's right. the hard thing. I think I'm in that same boat, Adam, that you were talking about a little bit ago. So, you know, that Avengers 4 is, is an ugly one. That Avengers 1 is an ugly one. And the Daredevil 1, the Punisher first appearance. Those are books that are definitely on my list that are just nasty and at this point i've got to decide and i think jd made a good point about like sending things off to slab i have a nice little chunk of money saved up so it's a decision of do i spend it on that big book that i've always really wanted or do i slab a huge bunch of books that i don't want that i could sell and then have money to spend you know what i mean? it's it's you know how do i make so i'm in that place for my list right now i have an i i'd like to because i'm consider the same thing half of the slabs you get back you want to keep forever half of the slabs you want to sell that way at least when you're sending things off you are retaining something that you got back they always remember that unboxing not as an unboxing that you were whoring off all, all your books like i do sometimes you know well, I, mean, I would, I would, and people, t I mean, may, and again, this might be the right person to ask JD, but like, for me, I, I understand that you want to like send things to, to be slabbed by era. So you, you have a modern maybe versus a silver right. set. Right. And most of the stuff I want to sell would be modern. So I would send oh, right. modern books off oh, that's to be great. slabbed. Uh, that I don't necessarily want to keep, but that I've gotten, you know, whether it's that avenging Spider-Man nine or, or, yeah or okay. whatever that I don't necessarily feel the need to keep, but that I know would be valuable because it's a high grade quality of that copy. Um, so then do I send that off and spend my money there? And then, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I always like to get some, something back in all these. I mean, I've, right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I stopped slabbing and selling. Sometimes I just sell now raw on the site. And I've been lucky, but I think I had better luck slabbing. So I might take that as a, like what I usually do is I think a few more. So uh, good call. Well, I really want to thank everybody in the chat for coming by tonight. And I hope that uh, we filled the empty space of Story Comic Core in some way, although you never can because obviously Why the Last Man is amazing. And those guys do a great job breaking Why the Last Man down. Uh, I believe they're booked now for next Monday. They'll have the show as normal. And I think they're trying to finish uh, another omnibus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is for next Monday, yes. So, so you can definitely tune in and catch those guys. Caleb is in the chat. He's he's lighting a fire under Art Germ. I better not talk about Art Germ ever again because Caleb is is lighting the chat on fire. And Art Germ versus Liefeld, lesser of two evils, war is happening. I'm not uh, going to recap it, but it is amazing. Very lively chat right now. It's very nice. Yeah, the chat is on fire. They don't want us to stop, man. They're they really do. <laughs> we can keep it. Do you want to, I mean, Caleb, you want to take over? <laughs> <laughs> Send the link to Caleb. Put him on here. He's always good at this stuff. He, he wants to. He wants to go for it. I don't know. He's he's having a blast. Yeah, that's good. He, should, he right. should run a. He should run a, a talk. Like Caleb should do a talk show. Right. I'll do it with him. Yeah. yeah. He wants to go live right after this. I'll 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 do the art German. He can do the life out. Maybe that's the next uh, comic court. Right. Who is most guilty? You guys should do that. Yeah, Liefeld versus Art Germ. This could be a riot. Uh, yep. Nice. Very so good. which one of us is going live next? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not. I want to I thank can't. you guys for coming by. I want to give you a quick chance to talk about your channel and maybe anything that's coming up. Uh, Adam, what do you got uh, on your channel? If people come by and check out your channel, what, what, what are they going to find? Uh, I have this contest that's exceeding any expectation I could have oh. possibly had for it. The, mm -hmm. uh, the Road Guard <laughs> Contest has been a lot of fun. I don't want to like pressure anyone who's not comfortable joining contests, but it is, it has become a little bit of a roll call for the community. Um, so uh, I'll be expecting uh, an entry from Discovery Bay Comics sometime soon. Oh, I um, you called me out last uh, time. Not, oh, I, <laughs> I will be, I'll be putting out my Royal Guard video, revealing my Royal Guard tomorrow at whatever time 
uh, JB tells me I should since he knows all the times. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for having me. This is why I'm here. This this type of thing right here. So thank you. Thank you, man. It's it's been awesome chatting. Good, you on shows. Good stuff, man. And what about you? Obviously, Discovery Bay, JB, they can expect regular content from you about the, the channel in particular. But I got to say, I'm still missing. I love your uh, weekend. I'm going to do unboxings. You get the girls and the and the, and the map behind and I you. Do too. Yeah, I got I got a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, we'll have to do 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 something uh, again. Definitely. So what's coming up for you? Anything else besides? Uh, um, the yeah, I just found out that Thursday I'm going to be doing an unboxing with um, Alec and um, Comic Spectre. We haven't—I don't think they've decided the time yet or the channel, but we're going to do a Spider-Man booth unboxing. I guess each of them has four, and I had at least four, so I said, "Yeah, let's do it." So we're going to do some of that, and then you know, the show—I'm premiering it every day. If you get a chance to be in one of the premieres, it is funny. Uh, I enjoy everyone that shows up in the premiere. I'm trying to be in that 12 to 1 range. This morning was a little rough. You know, I had some stuff with the kids. And then I really kind of waited. Once I saw JD was going live, I'm like, well, shit, I can't go when he's going. So I'll go after him. Uh, <laughs> but I'm trying to be in that 12 to 1230 uh, Pacific Standard Time, you know, range. Um, and then, you know, five days a week I'm, or six days a week, we do that, take Sundays off. And that's it. Well, I do appreciate all your hard work, just like everybody sort of seems to shout out and mention how great you are and what and the, the hard work that you're doing because yeah. we really appreciate it. You've got cool. a very cool, cool stuff going on. Thank right. you. JD, you got uh, two other shows going on this week, if I'm not mistaken, right? Correct. Tuesday, we have Golden Guys. Tomorrow night, we'll have a guest on there, uh, someone who's not as familiar to the YouTube community, but a Instagram person who reached out and we've we've talked and he's watched the show and I think he'd be great. Um, it'll be different and then Wednesday we have unlimited and uh, our big surprise guess is not for two weeks right I think it's two more weeks yeah yeah so we have a few we'll always have a surprise on unlimited so we try to throw some curveballs out there I do <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as for me, uh, I've got the two shows going on on Wednesday, uh, the Comic Con Unlimited, and then Book Club this week. We are going to be reading the third part of Batman Damned, which finishes this week. And we are also going to be looking at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue 40, because our guest is Burke Nasty, 54 Comics, and that guy loves him some Power Rangers, and there's a big book drop. Does he ever? Movie. So he wants us to, to read our, Alec and I are, are volunteering to read our very first Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic and discuss it and, and maybe light some dumpster fires if, uh, if, if things go off the rails too bad. Tomorrow, oh, he's yeah, he's, he's an awesome guy. And, uh, and of course, for him, we were more than happy to, uh, to push our boundaries a little bit. Um, Burke's awesome. He's thinking of dropping the nasty, though, from his name. And I told him, no, don't do that. No, so, Burke. Yeah. Oh, no, he's perfect. That's Burke Nasty. He's good. <laughs> and then tomorrow I'm helping out. Uh, Edwin, the comic jabroni, is doing his service for our country. He's gone back to do his uh, an another round of training. Uh, and so I'm filling in for him on the comic Triple Threat, the uh, buyer pass show that Rod does every Tuesday. Oh, right, yeah. And it's 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 easily one of my favorite shows of the week. It's a lot of great knowledge. And then personalities are really big and fun. So I'll do my best to be a, a jabroni for everybody uh, tomorrow on Rod's show. So we thank Edwin for his service, obviously, and, and uh, I'm just glad it gives me time to be on YouTube. There you go. <laughs> I also thank him for his workout videos, showing us new techniques of how to lift. Adam, you're looking like uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is a really good time for you. Oh, for tomorrow? Thank you. Yeah. That's... That was important to include in the live uh, broadcast here. JB is the best program director. <laughs> I swear, JB, we need you to program direct for the Comic Core and all the shows they're doing now. <laughs> that would be funny. No, he's my agent. He makes 10% of what I make. So, 10% <laughs> of nothing's good stuff. Love it. <laughs> here you well, go. Thank you, everybody, for coming by. As Caleb is saying, hashtag stay nasty. I'll, I'll give that a thing. salute. Stay nasty, Burke. Stay, yeah, stay nasty, everybody. Just, just keep Big old Tony boy, stay nasty, Burke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and uh, and have a great night. All right.